big one just swiped at it. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel today. Devin and I are breaking out the big rigs. We're going to be throwing some big hard and soft plastic swim baits. We've got the tranks set up with the Mojo Bass St. Croix rods. We also have the aftermarket DRT handles and knobs on these puppies. And we're going to be throwing out some working class zero baits as well as the debut of the Tiny Clash. But you guys will probably have to stick around towards later in the video because Devin tells me it's upside down. You guys will probably have to stick around because we're going to throw the soft plastics first. I'm thinking with the winter time temps this water, we might need to be casting out deep and just cranking real slow, but then maybe as the sun is setting and those fish might travel up shallow to go feed on some smaller fish, we might have some luck casting the tiny clash along the banks and working it a little bit slower, so we will see what happens. We will show you guys both of the tail modes as well as lip in versus lip out fishing with the tiny clash, so I'm pretty excited about it. But let's go ahead and get everything rigged up. Big baits, potential for huge fish. Let's get it going. Well, y'all, I wasn't rolling, but I just had a bite first cast on the Citizen. I was creeping it along the wall. I had a bite, I was about to crank down and set the hook, and I saw him swipe away. Not cool. I'm feeling good, I got that bite. Thank you. Mom, they jumped it, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> what is your name? <laughs> it's clear. Okay. Don't get in there. Yep. I never catch fish over here. Except like, sometimes. Dang, I might start throwing the tiny clash kind of soon. You wanna throw it? Just made a switch to the ponds, the water is extra clear on this side this is sick oh wow they cut down all the reeds oh no okay i was thinking about waiting until later to break out the tk but i'm gonna get it right now because this water is so clear and i think if i walk this guy kind of slowly i could actually get some serious hits because of the clarity these fish might come up close to the surface and smack it so i think what i'm gonna do right off the bat like literally my first time ever fishing it is take the lip out and just fish it lipless. I'm gonna see how this goes. I feel lost today, man. I don't have my snips, my extendable snips. You guys know I swear by those, but I grabbed them off this bag the other day to cut something and I did not put it back. So I am left with just the pliers to cut stuff, which is fine, just not as easy. I'm gonna go ahead and try and dab off a lot of this water. That way the hook doesn't get as rusted from staying wet inside of the packaging. Put this citizen right back into its uh, case here so it keeps its form factor. To rig up the tiny clash for the first time, this could get good. I do see a lot of people uh, tying it on with those extra clamps or whatever. What do you call it, a swivel? I don't remember. Anyways, we're going straight to the line tie on the baits. Let me know if I need to have one of those swivel deals tied on to get the proper action out of this or not down in the comments. Palomar knot, 20 pound fluorocarbon. I left a little extra on that tag end right there. So as I make these first few casts and maybe get a bite or two, it kind of tightens down a little bit more. You don't want to cut off all the tag end on your Palomar knots, especially with this big thick line. You want it to really get tightened up so that there's the least chance of slippage. There we go, guys. Three years into the vlogs and we are breaking out the DRT Tiny Clash. I'm pretty stoked. All right, first cast. Let's try this little dead walk everyone keeps talking about. Just little rod twitches. With these handles, I almost have to reel just a little bit faster. Yeah, if I swim it fast, there's just a little bit of body roll. I'm not really getting too much kick. It really almost looks best. Slow walk. Just subsurface. I might put the lip on here in a minute. I'm thinking we will do that. Oh, he's going... All right, he's about six inches underwater right now, actually. Dude, the thing's almost a foot underwater without the lip in at this moment. People do say it's kind of like a jerk bait and that you don't really have as much control with the lip out, uh, at least in certain modes, as like other glide baits. It kind of kind of does its own thing. I just hit that tree. I'm pretty sure it was just the bait, but I want to make sure my line's good. Always be checking the line, because if you get a fray, uh, you're jeopardizing losing your big baits. This rod is pretty stiff too, by the way, for uh, this bait. It's a 710 heavy with the fast tip. So it's really designed for um, probably a little bit better suited towards larger soft plastics. But it's a swim bait rod and it's geared for one to four ounces. This falls into the two ounce range. So I just wanted something beefy to launch this thing out there today. And by the way, I'm a little bit low on the line in the spool. I had a bad backlash that I had to pretty much take off all the line for. So don't be thinking I just walk around with an empty spool all the time. I need to get some more line. You'll find the right cadence that you got to go with the reel, basically with each rod twist, with each tick of the rod. That way you get a consistent side to side motion. Otherwise it kind of just comes straight at you and you really want a nice erratic motion. I think I'm going to leave the lip out because it is pretty shallow in some areas. 
and I'm gonna try my best not to get this thing caught on something because rather expensive bait. I do think these fish will come up to eat this though. A lot of flash, this thing does look good. This thing's kind of hard to work perfect. Sometimes it dives down like two or three feet, sometimes it stays close to the surface, sometimes it like does a good motion, sometimes it like just comes straight at you, it's kind of weird. Cheap piece of Big one just swiped at it. He got it. First one. First one on the TK. He swiped at it and missed it. Then he came back for it, guys. That's a good one, too. Hey, it's not bad, dude. That was cool. Saw it happen. I didn't think I was going to get that fish. The bait was at the bank when I saw him swipe at it. He kind of went back down. I popped it one more time. I was getting close to the reed edges, and he came back for it. We got extremely lucky on that one. But there we go. Solid fat winter. Two, two and a half, maybe. I would say two and a half on the top end. Absolutely sick though. Nope. Uh oh. All right, he's anxious to get back in there. Let's let him go. Ooh, go on in there, buddy. See ya. Sick, clear water. TK, that was dope. Line's feeling good. Lip out, man. First ever catch on it. Look, we already got a little bit of rash on these things. You always see that hook rash from these hooks coming up here. That's how you'll see those discolored TKs. Doesn't look that good, but it means you're getting the use out of it. I told y'all she wasn't going to be a garage queen on the unboxing, man. I am super pumped to get a catch on this. Let's keep casting. That was cool because we got to see that bite. I anticipate quite a few of these hitting it a little deeper, and we might not witness it. I got to turn away from the wind so y'all can hear me. I'm just kind of treating this like a jerk bait, y'all. I'm kind of popping it a few times, and then I'll let it rest. You don't want it to look like it's just darting all over the place because in these crazy cold waters, it is winter time. These fish see that as unrealistic and not natural. Maybe you'll get a reaction strike, but the thing is, if they see something just moving around, like these water temps are super warm, it seems unnatural to them. They might not go after it. They might assume it's fake. So work it kind of slow, give it a long pause. That's what got that bite. Hey, puppy. How you doing? Where's your home at? What you up to? And hmm, where'd it be? Might have got lucky with that one up shallow. I got a feeling they out there. Let's toss the lip in here and see how it goes. In some videos, people will have the lip in and it doesn't look like it dives that far. And then people say it goes down to like six feet. So I really have no idea what to think. So snap, crackle, pop. All right, let's just work it uh, right here in front of us real quick. See how she looks. Oh yeah, now she's got a nice little, nice little wobble. Oh man, angles down. Oh, okay. All right. I actually like this right here. Let's get her out there. Now what I need to know is how deep it'll dive. So I might, I'm probably gonna crank, crank, pause. That way it doesn't go too deep. And I jeopardize getting caught on something out there that I am unaware of. I do believe that this is just mainly grass. It's kind of got like a hard bottom. A lot of the grass has died, but if there's some thick stumps, these treble hooks will bury themselves in it. You can count on that. Oh yeah, it's getting, I mean, it's getting down there now. Yeah. We got some grass on it and everything. That's one of the things about this bait, man. So much research and development, R&D and engineering goes into it. This is literally you can, something you can fish all throughout the water column. So if you're at a little pond like this, this is the big swim bait for you if you're talking about, well, huh, not if you're talking about getting started in swim baits because it's expensive. But if you got some money to blow, go ahead and grab one of these. You can dive it. You can fish it close to the top. You can literally have it like top water, glide bait. You can do a lot of different things with it. You can flip this tail around too, and it'll work a little bit differently. In fact, I think I'm gonna try it. It's supposed to have more body roll and less uh, kind of like side to side wobble. So what I'm thinking is it's gonna be a little tighter and that looks a little bit more natural in the winter time as these fish are kind of slowing down. Yeah, just a little bit of body roll, still getting a good flash. This might be the winter time setup right here, guys, is where the tail is facing down. They call that mode B. So this is lip in mode B, almost like a flat sided crankbait. Those are more common in the winter time. It's a tighter wobble, so it looks more natural. The fish just aren't as active. And so on second thought, I don't like the tail facing down. I think I like mode A better. Even though the fish might like it a little bit better, I like the way it looks when the tail is facing up in mode A. So I'm going to continue with that. Sometimes it's all about your own mindset and confidence. So if you feel a little bit more confident fishing a bait a certain way, I would just say, go for it. We got that BB and J, baby. <laughs> got one more. I got a scarf real quick. Drop a follow on Instagram if y'all want to see what I'm eating on a day-to-day -day basis. Pretty much putting everything on the story. Goal is four to 6,000 calories a day. Well, if I consume 4,000 or 4,500, it pretty much does nothing for me and I don't gain any weight. So 
The goal is 6,000 every day. Try and consume something every two hours, at minimum every three hours. Try and go for a thousand calories a meal, but obviously it doesn't happen when I'm out fishing. So usually when I'm at home, I make some pasta, got some noodles, got a can of tuna, something easy and quick and simple. Protein shakes, just whatever. PB&J, swim bait chips with Weston. Hour, 59 minutes and 45 seconds until we eat again, y'all. Let's go. Good, how are you? Good, you? Excellent, thank you. Good, good any luck? Uh, one so far. One. one so far, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it was a little over two pounds. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't like, uh, you a little bit of fun. Yep. 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 But we're hunting for something bigger, you know, yeah, <laughs> you get out here and fish a little bit. Occasionally. Yeah. I'm on the fishing committee for the homeowners association. Okay. And one of the rules we have is that you have to be a resident here. Okay. Which we're not. You're not. No, no, no. Sorry. You'll have to leave them. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. One of our rules is a private property and, you know, just for liability and insurance purposes. Right. You wouldn't want me falling in. Exactly. <laughs> Bust my head open. Yeah, Luckily, be, you got the helmet. Be a problem. Yeah, no doubt. For you and me. <laughs> we'll get out of here. All right, I appreciate, appreciate it. What's your name? It. I'm Steven. Uh, it's Weston. Pleasure to meet Weston, you. Maybe I'll see you, you around you. at some other pond sometime. We'll catch some fish. Uh, yeah. Yeah, then you know there's like seven of them with the city of Frisco that are open. I'll find them. All right. Thank you. He's, yeah, the, he's the HOA fishing committee or something. That is not a thing. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> nice guy though. Yo, we were rolling up to spot number two. Where's the tundra? Dude, this looks killer. Just gliding over the grass. Very surprising. Nothing at spot number two. Well, y'all, after getting the boot and running by a few other ponds, we didn't get too many more bites. Sunset hit us pretty quick, but we're back here for the final recap. First impressions after use and almost a, uh, a review now of the bait. So what do we like? What do we dislike? I definitely like the bait lip in and the tail up, which is mode A kind of across the board. I mean, it's just like a crankbait. The thing rips, but would you want to spend a hundred bucks for a crankbait? You can find these on eBay used for probably 230 bucks, but if you want to get a hold of these at MSRP, I don't think the next launch is until like till April or May of 2021, and you may not be able to get them because they sell out in seconds. But if you're big into swim baits, you're looking to expand your arsenal, there's not much better, obviously. The fact is, you can cover so much ground with this bait. You can fish it as a diver, you can bang it off of rocks, you can creep it along some cover, you can also take the lip out, work it closer to the surface. You saw the deal with the tail facing up in mode A. It does seem to use that joint a little bit more and get some side to side wobble. And then again, with the tail flipped to where it points down in mode B, you seem to get less movement from that joint and more of a tighter body roll that I didn't care for as much on my first impressions and maybe I wasn't retrieving it the perfect way, but I do really like that dead walk, just kind of like that pop of the rod tip with it close to the water as you're reeling with each little pop. That was fantastic. And you just gotta work that out to get it dialed in because the thing is sometimes it wants to just cut straight down if you really go off cadence. Other times it might just kind of go left, right, and then like come straight at you. So you've certainly got to get used to that technique. But I think that's going to be some of the most fun catches. I am pretty excited to take this out on the boat though and fish some deeper water where these fish are suspending. Just toss that lip in and really start cranking through a lot of water, cover some water this winter and see if I can really get a true giant on this bait. Because after all, you are searching for the bigs when you throw something out this size or larger. Again, this is the smallest size in the lineup of DRT's uh, Clash baits. If I'm not mistaken. I don't think there's anything smaller, but you've got the Clash 9, kind of like the gold standard, right? Then you've got the uh, tiny Clash, the TK people call this one. So it's six and a half inches. And then you have the Ghost, which I promised in a previous video unboxing this, if we got to a thousand likes, I would purchase one. The only ones I could find were on eBay for like over $500. I would probably snap any one of my rods just trying to throw it, but I'm pretty stoked to, uh, Maybe get our hands on one, who knows what'll happen. But look, you know what you're getting yourself into if you're going for this guy right here. If you're new to fishing, this is not something you need to have. You do not wanna lose this, get snagged, and then you're out a hundred bucks. Maybe you find a deal and you get one of these for 50 bucks somewhere, but it's gonna be tough to come by. If you're trying to find one of these, maybe the Facebook Universe page, you might be able to find some used baits. A lot of times people are uh, going through their swim baits on there. But yeah, first day of fishing in the books, Palomar knot was tied. The bill didn't lose it. The tail didn't lose it. The hooks were perfectly fine. They are pretty stout. They're gonna last. Uh, you don't have the whole 360 swivel, but you've got more than enough to really give these fish less leverage to toss the hook. The bait's tried and true, huge following. The color looks fantastic, although it's gonna discolor very fast and give you those arches that you see from the hook rash. That's just part of these baits. Hopefully this thing lasts us a very long time and we don't lose it very soon, but anything could happen, of course. All I can say is after taking it out one time, I can't 
can't wait to throw it more. And again, one of the reasons why we purchased these is not only to fish them, but also to showcase them and reviews and things of that nature for you guys, which actually helps recoup some of the investment as these videos bring in more views, there's more income that's generated from it. And what that means is hopefully this bait will pay for itself after we film something like an unboxing of first impressions and a full review. And so with that being said, there's a reason for me to try out new stuff for you guys. And I hope you enjoyed this video, but not only this, but our upcoming videos. We've got a lot of exciting stuff coming to you guys in 2021. So be on the lookout. I've got something special for you guys in the next video. So stay tuned y'all till then. Peace out. Don't forget to subscribe. See ya. <gasps>